Cheers, guys. This is not a green screen. This is Game and Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Game and Friday. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Epics 911. Welcome to the Friday, January 13th, 2017 edition, otherwise known as the Gaming Friday edition of VR News. Lots to talk about. There's been a lot to talk about all week. Friday ends that week, but not in terms of volume. So let's get started. First news story, Valve acquires a 3D audio company called Impulsonic. Now, this week and last week, it seemed like we've read about two or three audio acquisitions. Everybody's in the uh, 3D audio acquisition business lately. Valve apparently as well. So this comes literally on the heels of the deluxe head strap being shown at the CES 2017. That's the one with the integrated headphones. So it kind of makes sense. Now there's no real details on anything other than the fact that they were acquired. No, some disclosed. Just this statement on Impulsonic's website. We haven't been super active on our blog or Twitter lately. And some of you have been wondering what we've been up to. Well, today we're excited to finally announce that Impulsonic has been acquired by Valve. We're confident that with the resources and expertise that Valve brings to the table, we will be able to push Fanon and VR audio to an exciting new level. The Impulsonic team will be transitioning to Valve HQ over the coming weeks, but our work will continue uninterrupted. So sure, we're going to get more details on this moving forward. But for now, a good sign that they they are taking virtual reality as serious as ever. Good to see those steps. So much has been happening on the HTC side of their uh, partnership. Haven't seen much on the Valve side. And of course, the one thing most of us are still waiting for VR wise, an actual Valve VR game. That would be pretty damn good. All right, next news story. Another one of these virtual reality White House tours, this time kind of the inside of the White House. And the studio responsible for this is Felix and Paul Studios. They teamed up with Oculus. Now, Felix and Paul are award-winning creators of VR experiences. They've won awards in that. They worked with both, both President Obama and the First Lady at least for another seven days. I think it's the 20th that um, our American friends to the south um, do the switcheroo. But uh, yeah, the initial version of this is basically an eight-minute narrated tour of the White House. It visits nine locations, internal locations, and at different points in the tour, you're handed off between Obama and the First Lady. There were a couple of times the reviewer said he'd be looking at something and be startled because it was either her or President Obama's voice literally coming from behind you. You turn and they're either standing there or seated. So for history buffs, people who are into politics or fans of the White House in general, we have this app. This was from VentureBeat, link below. Now, the experience itself is Samsung Gear VR and Oculus Rift, as well as being available on Facebook as a 360 straight up video that they are deploying. Next news piece, virtual reality startup Merxius gets you closer to reality. This was a story from the economic times India times about a startup in India who created a product called real sim editor or RED for short. Now, it's a general purpose tool for VR. And like we've heard with some of these tools over here, able to take a model, 3D model, any 3D model from, model from popular 3D rendering programs and turn that into a VR object that you can use in VR tools. So very cool. They describe it like Photoshop, but for VR with red, anybody can VR. It's currently being tested by the Indian armed forces. They hope to create a training module for engine maintenance. Using it can be licensed by anyone from the fields of manufacturing, engineering, design, 
or architecture. So very cool. You know, we've heard so much about China, not a lot coming out of India. They are a fast growing economy in the world. I mean, it's another country with a billion people. And when we talk about the future, it's those countries and their economies that are revving towards that. All right, this next story I thought was really cool. It's a local news story, local to Canada anyways, and I saw it on 3dprint.com first, then back via a Canadian news site. And what this is, it's a University of Saskatchewan, which is one of our provinces in Canada, a program that was developed at the University of Saskatchewan to be able to view the human brain and possibly other things in virtual reality. Now, it seems right out of a sci-fi movie, but with this tool, Dr. Ivar Mendez, he was the one who headed the team at the university, he says the following about the tool. We created this 3D brain where the surgeon can enter the brain, look at a brain tumor, and can see the relationship of the brain tumor with other brain structures and potentially plan a surgical procedure. What's so amazing about that is it can be patient specific. So sure, we've talked about that in the past, the training aspect, train somebody on a human brain, but using this kind of software to work with tools like MRI machines and to allow a surgeon to literally go into the area before he's even done one cut is pretty damn amazing. Now, they also say a medical student can enter the VR environment and really understand the different structures of the brain, the 3D uh, arrangement of those nuclei and areas of the brain related to function. Until you can actually piece the brain together in your mind and see how everything is structured from the inside out, it is so difficult to understand. The VR just makes it so much easier to parse through 3D structure of the brain. Very cool, and like I said, that's uh, out of a Canadian university, which I thought was very cool. Next news story, Space Inc. We talked about these guys back in August, and at that time, they had raised tens of millions of dollars to create a virtual reality theme park. Well, today, they are $6.5 million US closer to that. They have a statement up on their blog through our spaces, parks and attractions division. We're fundamentally reimagining the theme park experience with stunning advances in VR technology, says Space's co-founder and CEO Shiraz Akmal in the prepared statement. Together with our Shangchen joint venture, this new capital expands our efforts to create entirely new kinds of VR enabled destinations. So very cool. We've seen and heard of lots of VR arcades popping up. Heard of them in the UK, we've had them in the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, I believe we talked about. Of course, we know about the ones in China. What will be interesting to see is which one of those, and yeah, I believe continental Europe as well, but which of those are going to be able to be self-sufficient and have a business model that actually works? Because I remember the very first story that came out on, I believe it was also either in Canada or the US, he'd opened a VR arcade, but when you looked at the number of HMDs he had, which was one, and his booking times online, the math just didn't add up to average lease costs, well, at least the lease costs here on the West Coast. So. I was a little perplexed at how he was going to be able to make it just with that, even with full bookings if you can't make the bills, but we'll see. Hopefully these guys have strong models in place and that won't be an issue. And certainly with spaces, parks and attractions, it's an actual theme park. It'd be kind of cool to see what they could come up with to make an entire theme park. Well, I guess they were doing that in the Japanese one, but that was the third floor of a building. When I think theme park, I'm thinking Disneyland, Universal Studios, but obviously they could be much, much smaller and more focused in scale. Now, this next story, guys, cracked me up. I got a kick out of this one because it involves one of my personal favorite programmers, 
John Carmack. So we talked about the test or the uh, trial rather that has started. And that's the one that ZeniMax has launched against Facebook regarding the Oculus Rift. They feel that it was developed on their premises using their resources and they are therefore entitled to a sum of money. Now, Oculus for their part says it's absolutely ridiculous and is intent on countering those accusations. Now, today was about questioning John Carmack and what they did. Now, ZeniMax, let's rewind just really quick here. They refer to him in these legal proceedings as singularly experienced and a highly proficient programmer. Most of us, we know him as one of the fathers for 3D gaming, as well as the ability to give multi-hour tech talks with no notes, scripts, or even bio breaks. The guy just keeps going, and it's pretty amazing to watch because he doesn't repeat, and he covers new stuff each time. Now, some of the questions that they asked him, for example, what does BFG in Doom stand for? And deadpan, he responds, big fucking gun, which was funny. Now, the questions also got pretty heated at times. For example, Anthony Sammy, he's one of the attorneys for the ZeniMax team, asked John if he knew about a secret meeting in a hotel room with Oculus co-founders Nate Mitchell and Palmer Lucky, to which he replied, no, I didn't. It was a secret. Which, which I thought exactly, yeah, which I thought was funny as hell. Maybe not as funny reading it the second time, but funny the first time. Now, they also brought up a MacBook to the stand where he was doing the answering. And the lawyer asked him why the MacBook was never wiped. He responded, I am not a Mac user unless under duress, which, again, if you know Carmack, that's right down his alley. And nothing against Mac users. This is John Carmack's quote, which I thought was good. Now, it'll be interesting as this trial goes on. It's expected, as I mentioned the other day when I talked about it, to last two or three weeks. Personally, if you ask me, kind of on the Oculus side of this, um, I tend to buy John's argument and Oculus's. Now, of course, with everything in the news, that might appear the easy road, but he had stated, like I mentioned in the last report, that he had brought this to their attention and, you know, offered, why don't we make our own? And there was no interest at the time. So who knows? Hopefully that comes out during the trial and we find out over the next few weeks. There was also somebody who commented uh, in the comments section that it would be awesome if this was recorded, you know, for some of the wisecracks and stuff. Now, obviously, that's not legal, but of course, there's going to be court transcripts. I don't know what the rules are. I mean, I know it's based on English common law in the States as well, but I would imagine at some point, those transcript records would be released to the public. So I'm sure at some point in the future, we're going to get all the details. All right, guys, that's it for the news. Cheers as always, and definitely catch you guys on the VR flip side.